Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of the weather unit. This is unit 5, and we're going to be focusing on humidity. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that this is going to be a little bit of content uh, heavy material. Um, it is not to be taken lightly, I would say. You might have to study this stuff, but I'm pretty much going to give you the Cliff Notes version of it here. So, here we go. The first thing you got to know about is the water cycle. So there's a couple things in particular about the cycle. This shows every process in this picture, but generally there's going to be water vapor that's being pushed up into the air, and then the water is going to come back down, probably through precipitation. So you got evaporation from the ocean, and the water vapor rises up, and it cools down to the dew point temperature, which we will talk about later, and ends up condensing into liquid and forming these things called clouds, which you might know of. And then eventually, depending on how cold it is or warm it is, you're going to get some type of precipitation, which is the water falling from the cloud. And it might fall on land, and in this picture, like a mountain, and it floods down or runs off into streams or rivers and then eventually goes back into the ocean. Some of it does get absorbed into the ground through a process called infiltration, which means to like seep into the dirt, essentially. And that might pool up underneath as groundwater. So that's generally what it is. Um, there's also water coming off the plants, which is called transpiration. Okay, so now on to humidity and air masses. So there's one main thing you gotta know. Air temperature that is hotter has more space between the molecules. Therefore, it can hold more water vapor. Cold air does not have that much space between the molecules, so it has less space to hold water vapor. Now before we actually talk about this picture, we're actually going to go over something about relative humidity. So relative humidity is the percentage full of water vapor of an air mass. So for example, if I have a cold air mass, which is represented by this container here, and I fill it up halfway with water vapor, this would have a relative humidity of 50%. Now if I were to heat this up, I would have to make the container much bigger because warm air can hold more water vapor. And if I put the same amount of water in it, you could see that this is no longer half full. Same amount of water, bigger container. So relative humidity dropped as I heated up the air mass. So generally, uh, this is what this uh, picture here is showing. This would be water vapor with 100% relative humidity. You could see there's no yellow, which represents the air. It's completely full. Now if I heat the air up from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius, now the air is represented by the yellow circle. That same amount of water vapor only takes up half of it. Because I heated it up, I made the, there be more space. So now the relative humidity is only 53%. And now if I heat it up to 30, look how big the air is. My water vapor only takes up 28% in this case. So the, the moral of this story is as temperature increases, relative humidity drops because we're now going to have more space. Now you could say it the reverse. If the temperature is going to go the opposite way, you're making there be less space, so relative humidity naturally increases. Okay. Uh, in terms of dew point, dew point is the temperature at which water, va uh, water has to cool down to in order to condense. So generally speaking, the higher the dew point, the more moisture there is. And you can see this by this nice storm center report. So higher dew point equals higher moisture. Okay. There's a couple of things that happen when the air temperature actually hits the dew point temperature three things. Number one, the air is now completely saturated. Saturated means full. The relative humidity is 100%, meaning it is full. And if it's full and you continue to add water, there's not going to be any room for the water, so the water vapor ends up condensing into a liquid. So if the temperature hits the dew point, these three things continue to happen. So say... Temperature outside is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and the dew point for the day is 70, right? Now, 
say it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. By the nighttime, if the dew point's still 70 degrees, and now I cool the air down to 75 degrees, say it's like eight o'clock at night, it's a nice day, nice night. At this point, these two temperatures are not close, which means none of these th three things are, are true yet. But over here, this is much closer. So what happened is, going from here to here, number one, the air is now more saturated. The air is now higher humidity, because we're almost hitting the dew point, so it's close to 100%. And number three, we're closer to condensation happening. So generally, when you have the temperature close to the dew point, you're going to get higher humidity, which eventually is going to make more clouds, which will eventually give you precipitation of some sort. Now, in this case, the precipitation would probably be rain because the temperature is above freezing. So it depends on the day, what type of precipitation you, you will get. Okay, so now we're going to cloud formation. We use an acronym called RECDC. And this image sort of explains it. So you got warm air on the ground. It starts to rise up with the water vapor in it. It expands and then it cools down because as you go up in the air, the temperature drops. It cools down and eventually if it hits the dew point, like we just discussed, if the air temperature hits the dew point, condensation occurs. So the condensation is going to take the invisible water vapor in the air and condense it onto these little particles, dust particles called condensation nuclei. And eventually, if you get enough water to land on the droplet, in a, in a, and there's a lot of droplets, it's going to be too heavy, so it ends up falling. The water droplet will not fall out of the cloud unless it's heavy enough. So the dust is pretty strong until there's too much water. Now, there's also tons of dust in the atmosphere, so we do say that precipitation processes clean the atmosphere of all the dust particles because it takes the dust particle and now brings it down to the ground which it then goes into lakes and the cycle repeats. So the acronym is rising. So warm air, you could say rising or rises, expands, cools to the dew point, and then condenses. Okay. This is an example question of what you will have to use the dew point relative humidity chart in your reference table. So I'm going to do a demonstration of how this works. It says, what is the dew point when the dry bulb temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 17%? The dry bulb just means the air temperature. What this is referring to is this instrument called a sling psychrometer, and it looks something like this. There's a dry bulb, which doesn't have a cloth around it, and a wet bulb which does have a cloth around it. So as you spin it around, the wet bulb, the water in here, evaporates, and evaporation cools this thermometer down. So if there's room in the atmosphere for water vapor, there's going to be a lot of evaporation, which means you'll have a big difference between your two bulbs in temperature. But if there's not enough room for evaporation and it's really, really humid outside, this cloth is not going to be able to evaporate the water off which means there won't be a big difference between the two numbers, which means there's high humidity outside. So what you got to know about sling psychrometer, the bigger the difference between the numbers, the less humid it is. The smaller the difference between the numbers, the more humid it is, because that water can't evaporate off that cloth. Okay, so we got what is the dew point when the dry bulb temperature is 20 degrees and the relative humidity is 17. So this is a double chart question. So it says what is the dew point? So we go to the dew point, right, which are all these numbers in the middle, when the dry bulb temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So here's dry bulb temperature, go to 20 degrees Celsius, and the relative humidity is 17%. Now we don't have enough information on this chart to be able to get the answer yet. So we're going to go to the relative humidity chart go to the dry bulb 20 and relative humidity 17. So go across this column until you eventually hit 17. Aha, here it is. This gives us the difference, which is 11. So now we can go back to the dew point chart. We could go 20, difference of 11. So your answer here 
will be negative five degrees Celsius. So if there's not enough information on the chart that you're currently using, you gotta go get that information on the other chart and bring it back. Um, so at the end of this video, there's gonna be a, a, a practice question on this so you can see another type of this question. Uh, I'm just giving honorable mention to this temperature conversion chart. It's in your reference table. So the Fahrenheit side goes up by twos, the Celsius goes up by ones, and the Kelvins go up by ones. It tells you the temperature at which water freezes for all three, it tells you room temperature for all three, and when water boils for all three. So if, you, if they ask you to convert a temperature, you got to use this chart. I recommend using a flat piece of paper, like rip a page off your test booklet or something, and like make a straight edge so that you can see exactly where the lines are because it gets a little jumbled. Okay, here we go with the practice questions. If you know my videos by now, you know. Pause the video, see if you get an answer, and then see if you get it right. Number one, most water vapor enters the Earth's atmosphere by the process of what? So if you want something to enter the atmosphere, it's got to be going up, obviously. Atmosphere is the sky. So the only processes that make water go up in this situation is evaporation and transpiration, D. Number two, most clouds form in the atmosphere when moist air does what? Well, if you remember, Rec DC rises, expands, cools to the dew point, and condenses. A is your best answer. If you want a cloud to form, you don't want the air to sink. So those two should be automatically out. Number three, why is it possible for no rain to be falling from a cloud? So we talked about this before. The water droplets need to be a certain size in, in weight in order for the droplet to actually be heavy enough to fall. So the best answer is A. Number four, a temperature conversion question. An air temperature of 30 degrees Celsius is equal to what? It wants you to go to Fahrenheit. So you're going to go from here to here. Remember, these go up by twos and these go up by one. So if I go to 30 degrees Celsius, which is right here, and I just go across, I know my answer is going to be between 80 and 100. So that, that made it really easy. The answer is D. I didn't really even have to look at the lines because I knew that it would be between 80 and 100. But you should just to double check. Number five, as the dew point temperature of air decreases, what happens to the amount of moisture in that sample? So we said the dew point temperature is the amount of moisture. So the higher the dew point, the higher the moisture, right? So if the dew point is decreasing, guess what? The amount of moisture decreases. It's a direct relationship. Number six, atmospheric transparency will go up or increase when which of these things happen? Transparency means how see-through it is. So if you transparency goes up, it's going to be easier to see through or in this case cleaner so remember we talked about precipitation cleans the atmosphere of dust and debris so you're gonna have D as the answer fog would make it less transparent volcanic eruptions shoot dirt into the air so that would be less transparent and insulation reflected by clouds that doesn't really pertain to this question Number seven, clouds usually form when what? Here we go again, rec DC. Rises, expands, cools to the dew point, and condenses onto condensation nuclei. So the answer is A. Evaporation does not warm. Relative humidity, you need it to be 100% in order for the cloud to form. So that's out. And condensation nuclei, you need them. So if you take them away, that's bad. Number eight, in order for clouds to form, cooling air must do what? Well, to get a cloud to form, you need the air to be saturated. You need it to be full of water. So this is good. So this would be bad. If it's unsaturated, that means there's no water. If there's no water, you're not going to get a cloud. And you also need there to be condensation nuclei, the dust particles, for the water vapor to condense onto. It's like a little surface, so if there's no condensation nuclei, the water vapor has nothing to land on and you won't get a cloud. So B. 
Number nine, a psychrometer is used to determine which two things. Psychrometer measures the two things we use those two charts for. It measures the relative humidity and the dew point. Uh, air pressure is a barometer. Air temperature is a thermometer. Wind speed is an anemometer. And wind direction is a wind vane. And number 10, a dew point question. So get out your reference table chart, see if you could do this one. The dew point is 15 degrees Celsius. What is the wet bulb temperature on a sling psychrometer if the dry bulb is 18? So we have a dry bulb temperature and a dew point and they want the wet bulb temperature. The wet bulb temperature is always less or equal to the dry bulb. Because evaporation, it, the cloth is wet. So if it were to not evaporate, the temperature would just be the same as the, dupe, uh, the air temperature. But if it were to evaporate, it would cool. It's never going to be higher. So the dew point's 15, and the dry bulb's 18 degrees. So here's 18 degrees, and the dew point's 15. So we're going to go across till we hit 15. The difference is 2. So that means that the wet bulb is 2 degrees lower than the, the dry bulb. So we're going to do 18 minus 2. So 16 degrees is the best answer. Um, one thing to notice about this chart, if, if the dry bulb is an odd number, you're going to use the line in between the two numbers. So if it's like the dry bulb's 9 degrees, you would go between 8 and 10, and the answer would be between the two numbers that you're around, OK? So that is the end of the humidity section. Like I said, you might have to study this stuff. Uh, watch the content in the beginning of this a couple times. Hope it was helpful, and I'll see you on the next weather video. Good luck.